I've seen a lot of suffering during my 33 years in the construction industry, starting with my father who died when I was 19. However, I see a future where we intentionally focus on building people along the building process. We have an opportunity to transform this antiquated industry, which often relies on alcohol and drugs to relieve stress. Our time together is about showing you how can we bring humanity into construction. And for today, we will be discussing four key points. One, introducing empathy into construction. Two, how to maximize your success potential regardless of the risk. Three, how to improve your leadership skills and influence your stakeholders. And four, key pillars to execute and deliver your project. Before we begin, let me share a few things about me. I am the president and CEO of Lunacon Construction Group. Lunacon is a Florida Hispanic women-owned organization founded in 2007. Before taking this leap of faith, I was the head of construction for the city of Fort Lauderdale and had acquired 17 years of experience working with large construction companies while being a single mother. Lunacon started doing business in my garage and was formed at the depth of the national financial crisis. Lunacon now is a $50 million company and has completed over 250 projects for the federal, municipal, and private clients. So enough of me. Let's talk about this. Did you know the construction industry has the second highest rate of suicide? According to the CDC, the profession with the highest suicide rate is construction and extraction, with 52.1 deaths by suicide per 100,000 professionals at a rate uh, that is over 200% higher than the average profession. You see, I've been in the construction industry for more than 33 years in multiple roles, yet I just learned about this fact a few years ago. I wonder if you knew about this. I believe that if we adopt a culture of empathy, growth, and accountability, we could significantly reduce the stress, depression, and anxiety that is triggering is that are the triggering factors for people to think about suicide as an alternative. So why do we have so much suffering and depression in this industry? You see, suffering is caused by feeling a feeling of separation and disconnection. These are three characteristics that are common in the industry. Number one is disconnection from people and self. Disconnection from work that gives meaning and purpose. Number three is disconnection from hope and a sense of financial security. And COVID-19 just magnify the problem. How much do your projects contribute to the suicide or depression in construction? Well, now let's look at what can we do. Empathy is about connection, building trust and alignment in thinking which increases our ability to solve problems. And we can do these four things. One, listen to and acknowledge. Your, your team will feel valued and more receptive to hearing other people's perspective and change their own view. Empathetic listeners can increase innovation, problem solving skills, and ignite their team's internal desire to succeed. The second thing we can do is communicate frequently. Often we don't want to deal with the undesired emotion the person or the issue brings to us. We know this industry can be heated. Often we form a belief of or judgment or a story around the situation, even though it is not a fact. We allow our ego to take over and resource to silence we send a letter, a directive, 
documenting without verifying the facts or our assumptions just to support our lack of courage to initiate a crucial conversation. Or we spend 95% of the time in the problem, finding who to blame instead of making the decision to learn and focus on finding the solution. Number three, connection and rapport, which are key parts of introdu introducing empathy into construction. Connection creates a safe, safe atmosphere. It creates solidarity. Connection and rapport are fundamental for healthy human relations. And building rapport is the first step to influence. And that influence is very important in construction, as you know, very important for negotiation. And lastly, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence includes empathy as a core skill. It is proven to increase business success in numerous studies by Daniel Goldman, author of Emotional Intelligence. Emotional intelligence help others move through transformation gracefully, step into their minds and understand their frustrations and anticipate where they will resist change, which is very important for us to consider even when we're introducing technology in our companies. Now let's move into our second topic, how to maximize your success potential regardless of the risk. And I find that the first thing we need to do is develop a culture of accountability by focusing in three areas, clarity, people, manage and measure. For clarity, we need to make sure the entire organization understands which are the company's three to five main objectives, and that everyone is clear as to what outcomes they need to achieve in their role to positively impact the company's objectives. This is also true at the project level. The second thing is people. Build a team of A players. And I want to share the book Who, it'd be a good source for more information. Define critical drivers and critical outcomes for every role. People need to know what do they need to do to be successful and also reward and consequences. Engage in crucial conversations frequently and provide fair compensation program. The third thing for clarity is to manage and measure and provide frequent feedback. It's important to have financial information on time it's important to be accountable and assume responsibility. And uh, focusing 95% of your time in looking for a solution instead of the problem. Often we do the opposite. We spend a lot of time finding blame and pointing fingers. And uh, learn how to make decisions quickly. Make decisions from a place of courage, not fear. Oftentimes we halt the decision-making process, trying to be perfect. The second area would be develop a culture of planning. So now we have a culture of accountability, but we also need to plan. I believe our industry does not de devote enough time to thinking and planning. As a result, we are more reactive than our budget can afford. Develop a habit of setting time aside to think and challenge your assumptions. Get in the habit of asking, what don't I see? Anticipate. For a culture of planning, you want to A, create an outcome-based plan and monitor frequently. Make your objective smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, timely develop a strategic plan. Find the real obstacle, not the symptom. Check your assumptions. Everything we think is not true. Measure and adjust frequently. B, identify obstacles and assumptions. Divide projects into mini projects 
identify roadblocks in the way, and be mindful of your assumptions. C, focus and manage your calendar. Intentionally take time to think and plan. And I want to reference Tony Robbins when he says, the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of the questions you are asking of yourself. And I think that's applicable to our projects also. For the time management, I would encourage you to learn how to prioritize and uh, understand the four quadrants. Understand what's important and urgent, what's important but not urgent, what's urgent but not important, and what's urgent and important. A lot of times when, we're, when, when we are in a reactive place or a project is unorganized and planning is not part of our focus, we are most of the time in urgent things that are also important but it's pretty reactive and it's pretty stressful. Try to spend most of your time in things that are important, yet not urgent, yet. Also, learn how to leverage and delegate. Develop a discipline to take action. Avoid making a story and understand reality as it is. Don't interpret based on your emotions. Divide your project into phases because sometimes it's hard for other people to see the, the end of the project, especially when our projects are one, two, three years long. And check in daily with your team. And third, you want to develop a system to mitigate risk. So we have developing a culture of accountability, a culture of planning, and you also want to develop a system to mitigate risk. So create a system to track and communicate risk from inception to completion. Sometimes we lose track of, our, of the risk we have identified at the beginning of the project. So it's important to identify, understand your contract and client desire, and communicate frequently with trade, with trade partners and vendors. Analyze your pros and cons for every risk and look for ways to reduce potential cost impact. Leverage all your stakeholders to identify risk. Monitor cost and cash flow and make decisions frequently. Also, it's important to apply emotional intelligence in your negotiation process. Create rapport and understand their pain. Imagine potential reactions they could have or could impact them. And be aware of your own emotions. Let's now identify ways to improve your leadership skills and influence your stakeholders. Let us start by beginning to listen. Leaders should start by listening in order to take others towards their future. Listen to allow people to vent and help them move on. Before rolling out a new strategy, listen for more than the objective. Find fundamental obstacles and comments that hint resistance. This is true when implementing a new software, asking to resequence or accelerate a schedule. Listen for resistance. Otherwise, your plan might not be successful. We often direct trade partners to proceed just because it is in the contract, but often we have we but often we have not taken the time to build rapport, connection, and common ground. We must understand that it is important to build rapport and for us to understand their reality, their perspective, and remove any roadblocks in their world. So seek to listen and understand before embarking change. Don't be rigid. Don't underestimate the impact and the resistance. Don't allow your ego to dominate. 
So let's talk about having the right mindset to improve your leadership skills. People who care about others demonstrate higher motivation, productivity, and creativity towards the vision or future. At all phases of the process, understand three things. What to focus on, what this means, and what decisions or actions shall I take. Lastly, showing empathy with emotional intelligence is one of the skills you want to improve in order to maximize your leadership skills. Leaders with empathy are viewed as high performers. When employees feel their leaders care about them, they feel optimistic about the future and care more about the organization. So our number four objective is key pillars in executing and delivering your project. First, let's talk about your resources. It is very important for you to know your people. Identify their strengths and weaknesses. Onboarding and training is crucial and be prepared to deal with resistance and change. Next, let's focus on constant growth. Expand everyone's capabilities. Don't be afraid to make frequent decisions. There really are no, no failures, just results. This is something, it, it was very hard. I just learned not too long ago. And in construction, many times we focus on the failure and dwell on them. I urge you to see failures just as, as results. And give back and pay it forward. Lastly, let's stay on top of the environment. The environment or external circumstances you cannot control. Stay on top of them, anticipate. Stay on top of technology changes, implementation, resistance, and innovate to stay current. This is a very rapid environment you wanna stay on top of. I developed a belief during most of my 30 years in this industry, that construction was unforgiving, that this is not for everyone. I developed a belief that everyone wants to screw up everyone. Now I believe that the construction process is an opportunity for spiritual transformation. That hurt people hurt people, but happy people can influence. I believe that most conflicts are a result of internal suffering the person brings to the table and that it is just a cry for help for helps or a cry for love. I believe that most conflicts are created by lack of clarity and augmented by lack of communication, courage or decision making. I believe we could eliminate the time we waste in conflicts created by the ego and using this time to empower people, bring technology to our industry in the form of blockchain, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, so that we can make this process more efficient and enjoyable. I believe we could document this process and eliminate the need to learn through the school of hard knocks and trial and error. I believe we can go from destroying people to building people. I believe we can go from destroying the environment to innovating in ways to conserve. I believe we can go from stress to accountability and clarity. I believe we can go from pointing fingers to transparency and resourcefulness. I believe we can go from fear to courage from bridges and buildings collapsing to always choosing to do the right thing. We can go from resisting the implementation of technology to embracing change as a necessary process to transform and evolve. Thank you.